Welcome to this review of the solo model where we're going to talk about the golden rule. And our jumping off point is this question I've written out. What is the best steady state? Um, and the reason we want to ask this question is because we might want to think about policy in this model. We know that the steady state depends on different factors. We know that it can be modified. So we might want to think about what policies could we use to achieve the best steady state. But our starting point has to be, well, what do we mean by best steady state? What would be a good steady state? And on a little bit of reflection, it's presumably the one where you can have a lot of consumption per worker. Um, it's nice to have a lot of capital, but you only really want to use the capital to produce, and you only really want the production so that you can use it for consumption. So our goal is going to be how to maximize consumption per worker. And then I put a little arrow that said, well, when we think about consumption per worker, that's ultimately really a function of our capital. How much, you know, output can we produce? Well, that depends on our capital. And how much capital we end up with depends on our savings rate. So in some ways, we're asking, when we ask what is the best steady state, we're asking, you know, what is the best savings rate that will give us the best steady state? And people have two sort of gut reactions to that question. What is the best savings rate? I call them the short run and long run perspectives. The short run perspective is to say, hey, I remember the steady state consumption is going to be 1 minus s times y. So it depends on our output and our savings rate. And the best savings rate here seems like it would be 0. I should save absolutely nothing so I can dedicate 100% of my output to consumption. And I call this the short run perspective because it is right about the short run, but it ignores the dynamic effects of that low savings rate. The problem with saving nothing is that then you do no investment so all your capital slowly depreciates over time and you end up not being able to produce anything in the long run. So if you save absolutely nothing, your consumption in the steady state in the long run is gonna be absolutely nothing. So zero savings is probably the worst thing that, can you, that you can do because you'd have no consumption. So then other people take what, the, what I'd call the long run perspective. They think, ah, oh, you're right. If I save very little, I can't accumulate a lot of capital, so I can't produce a lot of output. So maybe the best would be, let's save as much as possible. And of course, there's an upper limit on saving. You can only save between zero and 100%. So the most would be a savings rate of one, 100%. The problem with that is that if you go to our equation here on the right, if s equals one, then you'll have one minus one times y, and it really doesn't matter what y is. Y could be absolutely enormous, but ultimately you, you, your consumption would be zero. So you really don't want to save everything, but you don't want to save nothing. Presumably you want to save something in between. If we plotted out your consumption as a function of the savings rate, it would go up for a while, then it would hit some peak, and then it would start going down. And if you're at either of the two extremes, you're going to have nothing. But somewhere in the middle is probably the optimal point. The way I've drawn the graph here makes it look like it's exactly in the middle. It's at a savings rate of 0.5 or 50%. That's probably not. In fact, I can confirm for you that's not going to be generally true. This might be a little asymmetric. But the optimum will be in the middle, somewhere between 0 and 1. And we call that savings rate that leads to this maximal amount of consumption the golden rule savings rate or SGR. So GR stands for golden rule. So let's now dig into this. Let's think about the algebra of how can we characterize this golden rule <coughs> savings rate. So we'll start with some algebra. We know that consumption is by definition based on our accounting identity. It's you produce some total amount of output little y or output per worker really and then you subtract out your investment per worker and whatever's left over goes to consumption. What we'd like to do now is write all of these variables in terms of k. So the simplest one is we know y is just f of k. Your output depends on your uh, production function and your capital input. And then the other thing is that we know that i equals uh, s times f of k in our basic model, but in steady state that investment has to be balanced out by depreciation. So we could say, in steady state at least, i star equals delta times k star. And it turns out that's the one I'm going to prefer. So let's put in delta k star here. So we have consumption in steady state equals f of k star minus delta k star. And now we want to maximize this. We want to maximize f of k star minus delta k star. 
And here's one of the few times where it's sort of inescapable that we're going to use some calculus. In your calculus class, you learned that if you take a derivative and set it equal to zero, that's going to help you find the sort of extremum points for any given function. Um, in this case, we're going to find the maximum. More generally, you could find a maximum or a minimum, but um, luck luckily for us, we're going to find the maximum, and you don't need to be able to prove that. So we'll take the derivative of f of k, and all we can say about that is that it's going to be f prime. And then the derivative of delta k, that's a straight line. So the derivative is just the slope. So it's minus delta equals 0. Then we'll rearrange this a bit. A bit. Let's put delta k, or sorry, delta onto the right-hand side. So we have f prime equals delta. And now we're, we can give f prime a better name. f prime tells you how much extra output you get per extra unit of capital. So it's basically it's delta f delta k and if you think way back what what that describes is basically our marginal product of capital so the left hand side f prime is our mpk so the way we well, we like to write this and the way people talk about this the most is that the golden rule is mpk equals delta you can use this as a condition for testing whether you've hit the maximum if mpk equals delta then you've maximized your consumption if mpk doesn't equals delta because it's either bigger or smaller then you haven't used, uh, haven't picked the golden rule amount of capital, you don't have the right savings rate, you don't have the, the golden rule savings rate. So let's do an example where we, where we work with this equation. We'll build on the equation we've been working with in all the previous discussions. We'll have f of k is k to the point 3. We had a savings rate of 16%, a depreciation, depreciation rate of 4%, and then I've given for you the derivative of f of k. It's f prime, the mpk is 0.3 times k to the negative 0.7. In a previous review, we found that the steady state for this savings rate and depreciation rate is k star is 7.246. And what we'd like to ask is that optimal? Is, that, is this savings rate, 16%, the optimal golden rule savings rate? And your gut reaction, I hope, is Probably not, right? 16% is really not saving that much. Um, you, presumably that the golden rule is going to be a little bit higher than that. We said it's not going to be 0 or 1, but it's probably not going to be that close to 0 or that close to 1 for any kind of realistic example. But let's try it out. Let's do some calculations. So the MPK is F prime. So MPK is 0.3. Then we'll plug in for K star 7.246. And the negative 0.7. This is not something you could do in your head. You'll just have to plug this into the calculator and we get 0.075-ish. I think I rounded off. And now we can compare that to delta and that is definitely not equal to delta. Delta is 0.04. So we know that this is not the golden rule level of capital. We either have too much capital or too little capital and we're either saving too much or too little. So we might want to ask about that. Is S too high or too low. Now that we've established that we know it's not right, it's either too high or too low. And the key insight is that as S goes up, it's going to lead us to accumulate more capital in steady state. We proved that with a graph doing some comparative statics in a previous review. And then as K goes up, we know that due to diminishing returns, the slope of that production function gets flatter, so our MPK goes down as K goes up. So what we'll need to have is the savings rate in increase from 16% that's going to lead to more capital, push the MPK down until we get to a point where this MPK is all the way down to 0.04 and it matches delta. So we conclude that S is too small, it's too low. And that's not surprising. We set our gut intuition as that 16% is really not a lot of savings, so presumably this is below the golden rule level. <laughs>